In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to draw a slab inside a RISA floor ES. First things, I'm going to start with a starting a model, and I'm going to push close. And the first one I'd like to demonstrate here is the DXF import. So this is the easiest way to import a model directly from DXF, or some kind of a CAD format, directly into RISA floor ES. You go to the file, and you go to import, and I'll go to DXF file. At that point, I can find the file on my computer that I'd like to import, push open, and here I get some choices about the layers I'd like to import. So I can find all the layers I have in the model. The beam layer I'll be calling beam lines. The column layer I'll have the column blocks. Blocks are what gets imported into Risa Floor ES for columns. Uh, the walls here I have on a wall layer, and so let's see here, wall lines. And I won't be bringing grid, grids in, this would be a project grid, but I do want to tell the program that it's a concrete floor slab. And in that concrete floor slab, I'm going to find the outline here of the slab edge. This was drawn in DXF. I'm going to import all of these different pieces, and I can say OK, and automatically this floor slab gets created, and my entire floor gets created from DXF. So this is the slab. If we look at that in rendered, we can see that this is the floor slab rendered. That's the easiest way here to import that, but if you don't have a full drawing like that that you want to import, but you do have some lines that you want to start off with, you can also do a DXF background. So in order to do a DXF background, I'm going to insert another floor and we'll demonstrate that. So insert floor, I'll call this a concrete floor slab, we'll put this at 20 feet, and we start off with a, a just a drawing grid, but instead of the drawing grid, I'm going to alter that and I'm going to use this DXF background. And here we can see it says import DXF, and this is for my drawing grid. And I can tell the program where to or put the origin. I'll leave that as zero location. I can tell the program what the scale factor is, and if I need to change the units in any way. But what I'll do is browse for the file. I'm going to pull up the same file I just used. And it brings in all the same layers I currently had in the last uh, import there, the blocks, the wall lines, uh, I've got the beam lines, and the slab edge. Once I push done, I'll see I have a gray background for the, for the drawing grid of that slab and all of the elements in my model. This is not the model, so when I look at rendered, there's no rendering of that. I need to draw on top of this to create my slab. So I'll go ahead and just draw slabs. I'll use the default set, de definition here, slab definition, and push apply. And you'll notice that I'm allowed to click on that drawing grid intersection points. So along this radial portion, I can click different elements here, and it lets me click, click on each different uh, point along the grid. So if I scroll along that grid, I see a little red line pop up whenever I need to click on that intersection. So I'm going to use my mouse and go all around the outside of this slab to define this whole entire slab. A couple more clicks, and we'll see that I now finish that slab with a green outline. I can push render there one more time, and you can see that now this is the slab edge. So that allows me to draw a slab edge like that as well. I can draw the openings in there, and I can continue to draw columns and walls, all allowing me to click on those that gray DXF background. Another way we can do it is we can insert another floor, and we'll show it demonstrate a different way here. I'm going to put this in at 30 feet. And instead of using a DXF import or a DXF underlay feature, what I can do is I can go ahead and I can show the background of the floor below. So it's, I go to Plot Options, and I go to the Miscellaneous tab, and I see it says Show Another Floor Below Current Floor. So now that I have the floors defined below, I can now start to see that there's a blue outline of the floor below. And all that is is just a shadow of what's happening underneath. I can also use my draw tool here, just like I did previously. I use the, the slab definition one and draw following an outline, and it lets me click to every location along this slab underneath. So as I go around the structure, I'm defining the slab edge. And we've got this little red star to help us indicate all the plot points. Okay, so now I have the three different types, the DFX, DXF import, DXF background, I've just showed the floor below. 
I'd also like to insert another floor, and in this case here I'm going to do another concrete floor. I'm going to say it's going to be 40 feet in elevation, and I'm going to use the drawing grid tool. So just like in your drawing grid here, it's just a grid of squares. You can go ahead and just draw from scratch right on top of that drawing grid. This is your default view, so it just allows you to click on any drawing grid intersection point and go ahead and create any shaped slab edge that you need here. So just freehanding a shape, so just to demonstrate the flexibility on this slab edge. We can push rendered, and we'll look at this in isometric view, and you see it allows me to freehand that drawing grid location. That might be a little difficult if you have a funny little shaped slab, um, so you might want to use the, the DXF if it's, if it's oddly shaped, but it would also help you to see that there are node points, so if you did have some control points that you needed to click to, you could do that with the drawing grid here with these nodes. Lastly, I'd like to demonstrate one more floor type here. I'm going to go ahead and click create another concrete floor, and we'll call this at 50 feet elevation. And this one here, I'm going to turn off that drawing grid. I'm going to use more of a traditional project grid. So on the data entry toolbar, you'll see I have a project grid. and allows me to put different increments in there. So I'll say, let's see here, 10 feet, uh, 10 increments. Of, instead of 10 feet, maybe 18 feet. And this is in the Z direction or the horizontal project grid. And then the vertical direction, maybe we'll say this will be 12 feet, 10 feet, uh, 10 increments of that. So when I click on all that, I zoom out a little bit here. I have another project grid layout that shows me places I can click to, those intersection points. So drawing again by draw new slabs, slab definitions, and I can push apply, and then I can follow the locations of these project grids, and I can go ahead and say maybe these are where the column locations are, and I can draw a slab like that. Now, oftentimes, if that is your column location, you might not draw your slab directly to the edge of the column location. So we do have a tool called Modify the Slab Edge by an offset. So what you can do is click on that tool, and it will allow you to offset the slab by a certain dimension. So if we know that it's not going to be tight to those project grid locations, I can say maybe offset it by two feet overall, push apply, and it will offset the entire slab. The other option you have there is to redraw the edges. So, for example, if we know that maybe a portion of our slab is going to be offset, but not the entire slab, I have a Modify Slabs tool here, and it lets me redraw these edges. So I can say Use, Redraw the Edges, and I can apply that, and it's telling me to click on an edge of the slab, and can say OK, click on that edge, and it lets me now freehand this edge portion. I can maybe bump it out, maybe I just need it to be extended a little bit here, and you'll see that it then redraws that. So there's several different ways to draw your slab, and we tried to go through all the different options here in this video. Thank you for your attention.